Uh, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm Steve Schlisky, the Activities and Programs Chair for the San Francisco chapter of Natus, uh, and welcome to our beginning Photoshop workshop. Uh, I'd like to, um, uh, before we get started, uh, make sure that all of your mics are on mute. And the way we're going to do questions and answers as we go along, and if you have a question, please put it in the chat. I'll be monitoring that and I'll ask those questions uh, as appropriate as we get through this. The structure of this class, Mike will be uh, working on two photographs. We'll go through the first photographs and we'll go through a set of questions and answers then and then he'll go through the second photograph and we'll do questions and answers at the end. Uh, first, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about Mike. Uh, for the Natus board, for local Natus chapter board, uh, Mike has been on the board since 2016 as either a governor or as the membership chair. He's our official photographer for Natus events, uh, like the Gale Hour, the Golden Silver Circle, and any sort of events we had pre-COVID where we would all meet. Uh, he also does a member benefit called the Natus Headshots, where we come into Mike's studio and he takes pictures of Natus members, local chapter members, and he professionally produces headshots for people who come in. It's been a great uh, member event. Since 2008, he's been teaching at Laney College in Oakland. And he teaches professional photography, uh, focusing on lighting and camera capture. I first met Mike in 2010, where we teamed up to teach a class in DSLR uh, video production. Uh, coming from the still side, I came from the video side. So he, he basically taught the camera, and I taught uh, production techniques to still and cinema uh, photographers and, and filmmakers. Since 1985, Mike has had his own company called Maya Photographics. It's a commercial corp as a commercial corporate photographer mm -hmm. in the Bay Area and Silicon Valley. He specialized in both film and digital mediums. He's uh, pretty much mechanized for uh, his lighting uh, and uh, film photography. Clients include Safeway, United Parcel Service, Kaiser Permanente, YMCA, AT&T, Southwest Airlines, Easter Seals, and Miller's Brewery. His retouching basics is part of this membership benefit that we're happy to provide for uh, local and uh, any chapter member, any of the 18 chapters across the country. Uh, I, I'd like to say Mike has uh, been a personal friend of mine since 2010, and he's my go-to guy for all of my video shoots. Mike, take it away. Great, thanks, Steve. Welcome everybody, and um, um, thanks for uh, participating today. So what I wanna do is get right into the meat of today. Um, we're gonna talk about retouching in Photoshop, mainly for portraits, headshots, um, that you might uh, need eventual retouching. Um, I actually, um, when I started thinking about this, I actually started my professional business, my photographics, as a uh, custom black and white lab and studio as a retoucher. And I go back in the old days, back in the dinosaurs when we were still using film, and I was retouching everything from 35 millimeter all the way up to 8 by 10 negatives. And we use pencil and dyes and brush. Now, with the digital, which is what we're going to be teaching today, digital retouching, the efficiency is so far advanced. Again, it's it's a great asset. And as I, uh, Steve mentioned, I do a lot of event corporate photography. A lot of my work is photographing corporate, commercial uh, portraits or more uh, editorial type headshots. So today, what I want to do is give everybody what I consider uh, my own workflow, workflow for retouching um, your portraits or headshots. And um, I'm using Photoshop mainly because we all use Photoshop. I use Photoshop mainly because of a little bit more um, control I have and using the tools. Normally when I come into Photoshop, my image is already processed. It means it's a for exposure and color balance, I go into Photoshop to prove and verify my corrections because I feel Photoshop is a great tool for basically proofing my um, post-processing of my image. Hopefully it's all done in camera, but we use 
Photoshop again to go in to verify, correct, and then mainly I use Photoshop for my um, photo retouching because of the tools available. So let's get right into what we're going to be following today. Um, I just wanted to bring up that uh, I, like all of you, I'm a professional. My time is real important. So I try to streamline my workflow so that I use minimum amount of time on the computer. It's always been my philosophy is to minimize my work time so that I'm not stuck in front of the computer as well as I'm looking at, again, professionally, my, uh, my income level. So what I've done, I've developed a series of tools and I have a basic standard when I'm retouching. I use specific tools and I minimize how many tools I use because we want to minimize how much um, changes we make to our image so that we don't lose quality. So when I, first of all, I start with my imaging. First thing I do, I have a thought process when I photograph somebody, how I need to use or where my photographs are gonna be used. Most of my work as a business portrait is gonna be used online or for commercial usage. So we wanna make sure that we retouch, but we retain the, the original facial so that when they show up, they're not somebody totally different. And that's always been, I think, the big um, controversy with retouching. How much retouching do you do? So we're going to look at this retouching today, both with a male subject and a female subject, and how far do we retouch? And it's going to be up to you as individuals, how much do you feel you need to retouch and depending on your subject. So again, there's a couple of things that I use when I'm deciding how much time do I spend sitting in front of the computer editing? And we'll start talking about that when we open up our first file. So my first process is, again, I evaluate my photo. I'll, first of all, eliminate any distractive uh, imperfections, reduce, and then go back and repeat. So first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna import in to Photoshop. As I go ahead and start conducting my um, uh, workshop today, uh, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and I'm gonna vocalize what I'm doing so that as I'm going through my different adjustments and actions, you start developing an idea of how I start thinking my process of evaluating and when I decide to adjust something or when I don't. And this is always changing. This isn't a set process. I have tools I use, but things always change. I can retouch a photo one day and in 10 minutes, you know, adjust it differently. So these are things that, that aren't permanent, but they're tools to be used. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to do a screen share and open up Photoshop and we'll start by importing uh, the photos. So you all should have received um, a copy of the photo, the two photos we're going to be using today. A uh, male subject and a female subject. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do a screen share. And there's two ways to import into Photoshop. So we can actually go into our file, drop down your file from your menu bar, go ahead and choose open, or we can go into actually Photoshop and hit open. Or what I like to do, command or control. Oh, on your computers. And because some of you are on PC, I'm going to be giving you the control for PC as well as the command for um, uh, Mac. So I'm going to go ahead and since we're in our uh, Photoshop window, I'm going to hit the open. And I'm going to go to my folder on my desktop. And uh, what we're going to do, first of all, uh, we're going to go ahead and I decided to choose and work on the male subject, which is a photograph of Smokey Robinson, who I photographed geez, 20 years ago, maybe. Uh, the first process I, 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 I do in Photoshop is adjust and correct my exposure or the density, the lightness and darkness of my subject, as well as our color correction. When you open up Photoshop, again, we're going to have a 
couple of areas here we're going to concentrate on. Your tool panels here on the left, um, your display window right here. And again, because I work both in video and still, I normally refer to this display as my kind of working timeline. So if you hear me jump back to timeline, that's what we're referring to is our actual image and our display window. On the very far right panel is my actually work process and developing um, panel here where all, all my change and adjustments are happening down here in your lower panel. So when you open up uh, Photoshop, uh, some of you may not have this panel open down here, which is uh, where we have our history with our layers, our history, our channels, and our past. What you can do, and a lot of times when I open up Photoshop, this panel isn't open. If you come up under window, under window, this gives you some options where you can open certain functions in Photoshop. I always make sure my layers is checked. Oh, sorry guys. I checked to make sure it's checked. And when uh, your work panel opens up here, which is what we're going to be using to follow along today, um, your first image comes up, which is your original image in the uh, first tab here on Photoshop. Uh, when we talk about layers, um, normally when I work, I like working real fast, so I normally do everything manually. I normally do all my changes either on one or two layers, but what we're going to do today, because the beauty of, of, of Photoshop, we can create a layer for every adjustment so that as we go along today, you're going to see the process that I follow to be able to go back and repeat adjustments. I create a layer for every adjustment or changes that I make because I have uh, three or four specific adjustment tools we're going to be using today. So first thing we're going to do after we import, we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do is uh, because Photoshop is a destructive application, that means uh, the changes that you make, you're actually working on actual pixels on our image and it actually changes this image and it actually uh, deters, takes away a little bit of quality. Um, so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be working on separate layers and we're gonna be duplicating this original background layer so that again, the original uh, layer here is not changed. So we talk about layers. We're gonna make duplicate layers today. At the top of your menu bar here in Photoshop, you have your layers option. When you open up layers, you're gonna have your first tab open up, which is duplicate layer. So you can either duplicate your layer manually. And what I do is I always name my layers for my first adjustment. And I'm gonna label this um, levels because that's how we're gonna adjust our exposure and our scene. So I'm gonna label this label levels. Now, when you label that, now you have your duplicate layer opened up. There's a shortcut for layers, and after this first layer, I'm going to use that shortcut. And the shortcut for a duplicate layer in Photoshop is Control or Command J. So if I hit Command J, I just duplicated my previous level. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that until we get into our next layer. I don't wanna jump ahead of you guys. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is I'm going to look at my subject. I'm gonna evaluate it. When I'm looking at this photograph of Smokey, I'm looking at my face and my background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna real quickly choose my pencil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically circle areas that I'm going to be working on. So first of all, I'm going to look at my background and there's a little bit of area here in the background I'm going to take care of. Um, I'm looking at Smokey's hair here and I don't like this window here. So I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to work on his face. We're going to work on his eyes. There's little highlights here. We have wrinkles down here on his chin. We have a little bit of a um, five o'clock shadow. We have some lines on his neck. 
these are all situations as well as his forehead. We have little things that we can be working on. The thing to remember now, when I start evaluating and analyzing my photograph, how much adjustments do I want to make? Again, we want to make sure that we don't totally change our subject so that he looks 50 years younger or he looks totally different. So we need to decide how much adjustment do we make. And again, as you start working on your own photographs, you have that option and decision how much you want to edit. So I'm going to clear all this. Um, if you want to, uh, I'm going to revert back, do Command Z, which basically what it does is it eliminates your last action. Or if you want to revert back to the original, you can uh, hit your function F12 key. I like to basically go back and just do Command Z. Command or Control Z basically delete, deletes your last action or adjustment. So because I'm going to adjust my exposure uh, on uh, Smoky here, um, I'm going to go ahead and create a separate adjustment level because the beauty of working with layers, you can come back and individually make adjustments to these layers as I go along and I edit. And one thing to uh, remember about layers, you can turn layers off and on with this eye that's to the left. So as we start building layers, we can turn these layers off and look at what we're doing. So when I'm in levels, I can either manually open up levels. And if I um, want to open up uh, levels manually, I can go to Command L, which is my levels panel adjusting levels. And the reason why I like using levels is because levels has a histogram, which gives me my very dark black area, which is on the far left, and my highlight area on the far right. The trick to using these histogram is to make sure that your points here, which are designated by these triangles, are within this graph here. We have a graph of shadow and highlight. So I'm going to move my scale over to the left. And as I go over to the left, you can see our exposure gets lighter. When we do this, we're moving both the highlight and your middle gray scale. And so when we move these points, what happens, you notice down here, underneath each of these triangles, which refer to highlight, gray, and shadow, we have the levels or points that are moving. So as we're moving this highlight level, we're lowering our, our levels or our opacity, which is why I like using levels because it gives me a reference point. If I want to document this, I can write down my levels and match it and do this later. One thing I want to bring out, which is going to be something that um, we're going to be working with in Photoshop, there's a lot of auto settings here. There's a lot of um, uh, settings that you can use that Photoshop has a default set in the Photoshop that you can use that uh, if you don't really know how far to make your corrections, you can try the auto setting and see what it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to my original correction and let's try auto and see what happens. So I, when I hit auto, you can see there's what's happened is actually moved my highlight over to the peak again. So what Photoshop is seeing, it's, it's, it's basically taking and it's analyzing the highlights, the shadow area, and the middle tones, and it's making adjustments for what it feels is that setting. You have to decide whether you like that or not. And this is pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it there. Um, and what's nice about levels as well, why I like using levels, because it has a color correction adjustment, which is what these eyedroppers refer to. In order to use these eyedroppers, you need to have a neutral area, a white or a gray, which is what I use to correct my, my color grading. Um, again, and we can do that. And because there's not really a distinct white here, I can go ahead and take my eyedropper and click on Smokey's teeth here. So I'm gonna do that right now so you can see what happens. And so 
again, what we're doing is we're doing actually a post white balance correction on Smokey. And this looks pretty good. We can see our background went neutral. We kind of neutralize his color grading, the color correction, which is, is actually pretty good. So I'm going to keep it here. So I've now adjusted my exposure as well as my color on Smokey. And if I want to, I can come in here and I can make adjustments to my picture if I want, if I don't like that. So again, I have options to come in here with my gray. You can see I can make it lighter or darker. I can come in and take my white point and make it lighter or darker. Just remember when you make these adjustments, you're adjusting your contrast as well. Again, I usually make some really fine tuning adjustments, just kind of bring it where, closer to where I want to for output source. Again, when we start judging, especially our exposure, you have to decide where are you going to output these? Are they going to go into online usage or print? And I usually have two different types of outputting depending on where my images are going to go. So we're just going to, for sake of today, we're going to say our exposure is great. I like this. I'm going to hit OK. And the beauty of this is now I can go back to these levels and go back to my uh, histogram and readjust it if after I start doing my adjustments, I want to go back and make final adjustments. So now I've done my exposure and I've done my um, color grading. So the next step I want to do, minimizing imperfections in the skin. I like to go in with a couple of tools. I like working with um, what's called the clone stamp, which is uh, this stamp, which looks like a stamp, which is in your tool panel. And the shortcut for your stamp is your key S. And so when I use my clone stamp, what the clone stamp does, it picks areas around your area you want to eliminate and it copies that over. And I started as using the clone exclusively. So again, uh, that's a tool that I use pretty extensively. The thing you need to remember when you start cloning your imperfections, what happens you duplicate the area around it. So you could actually be creating duplicate textures that you don't want to show. So you gotta be aware of that. Another tool that we use for eliminating imperfections is called the healing tool, which is right next to your stamp tool, your stamp tool, which is over here on your toolbar, right above your clone stamp. And the shortcut for that tool is J. So when we're working, I like using shortcut keys because I'm always going back and forth and I don't want to stop and have to go back to my toolbar and individually select these tools. I want to bring up another tool that's real important for when I'm working on uh, my images is your zoom in tool. Um, in your toolbar here, you can use your zoom tool at the very bottom, which is this magnifying glass. When you select that tool, what happens is you enable your zoom tool. And then when you click on your image with your cursor, it zooms in. The problem with, with that is when I'm working and adjusting with my other tools, now I have to stop and select that tool. So I'm going to go back. Um, there's a shortcut tool that you can use when you're zooming in. Um, it's actually command or control plus or minus on your keypad. So if I hit command minus, now we're minimizing our subject here. So now I just minimized uh, my subject. If I want to view my original uh, image, I can use command or control um, zero, but I like using my command plus or minus keys. And I, I have this kind of memorized, so it's easier for me to do that. So let's go back into and bring back up our levels and our adjustment. Uh, I mentioned uh, one um, adjustment tool by using levels. Um, I use a lot of times, I use what are called adjustment layers which is on the bottom of your work panel here and when we use adjustment layers it's this little circle that is split down here at the bottom tab and if you open this tab you have these options with different options to 
make these physical adjustments. I like using this adjustment layer because it creates a separate layer just for these specific changes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back and choose my levels again. And I'm going to open up my levels. I'll go in and first of all, I'm gonna make some minor changes to Smokey's face by eliminating um, uh, these different blemishes on Smokey's face. And so when I wanna make another adjustment, I'm gonna create a, a layer for this eliminating um, action, which is going to be my cloning tool. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back down to my work panel. And at the bottom of our work panel, again, we have some options here. And we have this uh, icon next to the trash, and that's to create another layer. So I'm, I'm going to create a separate layer just for my cloning tool, so I can have that to go back to in the future. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So I'm creating a separate layer. And as we create layers, they basically stack on top so we can go in succession and turn these layers off and on. And so I'm gonna go ahead and on my adjustment layer here for my cloning tool, I'm gonna to go ahead and start cloning. So I can either come over to my toolbar, manually select my cloning tool, or I can go and choose my S key, which will give me my cloning tool. When your cloning tool opens, you have this round target, which is your target that you're gonna use to highlight specific areas on the face and eliminate. And I wanna point out some different options and some controls on your tool here. And every tool has an options toolbar at the very top that allows you to adjust these tools. Uh, one of the first things I do is I wanna pick the size of my cloning tool, which again is designated by how sharp or how diffuse my tool is. So when I'm working with my cloning tool, I like a real diffuse tool so that it minimizes or it, it kind of feathers my diffusion tool so it's not so sharp. And we have some settings up here that you can manually set your size of your tool, which you can see as I use my slider, my target gets bigger or smaller. You can use the sliders here or what I like using because again I like using shortcuts you can use your brackets key which are next to the P on your keyboard when I push my bracket key the uh, one bracket next to the P that minimizes my target and the bracket next to that your right bracket enlarges your coin tool and these brackets work in conjunction with all of your selection tools here. So again, um, I've actually selected my brush size, which is 150. I, depending on how diffuse I want to uh, diffuse my, uh, my tool, I'll pick a, a, a brush tool the size I want it. Now, if we go back to your tool setting, you can create the hardness of your tool. And right now, it was real low because I had a real diffused tool. You can see these settings affect the hardness of your tool. So let's go back to uh, your image and um, we're gonna go back to make sure our cloning tool is selected. Uh, again, I'm going to reduce my cloning tool. And what I wanna do, when I'm working on my images, I'm gonna enlarge my tool a little bit. Um, I'm gonna enlarge my image so I can get a little bit closer view on my image. So again, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hit either Control, Command, Plus. And we're going to basically go through and start cloning or stamping out defects in Smokey's face. And I'm gonna look at highlights, uh, wrinkles, imperfections that I think will really help on this image here. So we're gonna go through real quickly. I'm gonna um, go ahead and choose and pick some uh, defects that we're gonna work on. So I'm gonna lower, reduce my cloning tool and I'm gonna go to my bracket to the left and I'm gonna minimize it. So as I go through and I start stamping, first of all, what we need to do is we need to choose an area uh, next to our area we want to eliminate. And when you 
get your target position, you want to go ahead and choose your option key, hold your option key down with your cursor, go ahead and click on that, and that selects that area. Now it just clones over that area. And you can see what it's doing, it's eliminating that. And the one thing to remember about up here on the top of your toolbar, you have an opacity and a flow. I keep my flow at 100% because that basically controls how much of your opacity or this tool you want to project. My opacity tool is that I, is, a, is adjustment that I am always adjusting. So if we keep it at 100%, it's gonna, it's gonna add this background that I added at 100%. You can see what happens is that we eliminate more. What I like to do is I like to keep my opacity tool down to about 25 or 30, because when I'm working, I like to build my changes. Just go through and do some changes here. And again, I'm going to adjust my target. I'm going to highlight it with my option key down, choose with my cursor and start highlighting. And you can see when I'm going through, it's choosing and picking areas around my image because in your option tools you have a content awareness tool that photoshop recognizes and so when i go along it's recognizing areas around for instance these lines that, that i see that i'm trying to eliminate and again if i find it's not eliminating enough i'm gonna go back to my tool again i'm gonna enlarge my image again so you can see what i'm doing i'm gonna choose an area outside my area I want to clone out. I'm going to align my target, push my option key and select it. If it's not affecting, making the change that I want, I can increase my opacity so that I can work faster. So we're gonna go ahead and work a little bit faster. You can see I'm eliminating areas. And it's a little bit slower process, but it gets me really in control so i can come down here into the wrinkles and lines again i'm going to enlarge my tool a bit i'm going to choose an area outside my line i'm going to align my target hit my option key and then now i'm going to start eliminating and again that was a little bit too much so i'm going to go ahead and delete that last action you can see as i do command z it erases my last adjustment tool so i'm going to lower my opacity down it's too much and go back down to about 20 lower my tool size and again i can adjust my tool so that i again can control my adjustment and because we're working on a man i want to minimize how much i change i just want to uh, minimize some of these imperfections and there's different ways that i can do this I'm going to reduce it down with my clone tool. And I want to get rid of some of these wrinkles because these wrinkles to me are too hard. Now, a problem that you're going to find a lot of times is that if you work with your image too large, you could spend all day here on these adjustments. So when I work on my image, I, I like minimizing my image. So I'm going to reduce my face a little bit smaller so that I can work again with a smaller face, increase my tool, and I can work a little bit faster. So I'm gonna take some imperfections here. I'm gonna work on the highlights, some of these imperfections down here and just do some real quick retouching. So let's look at uh, this highlight on Smokey's nose here. I'm gonna go ahead again, reduce my clone stamp, I'm gonna select this area that's pretty neutral, hit my option key, and I can start cloning over this. So as I'm working on building, adjusting these tools, so I'm adding and building. So as I'm working along here, everybody, I'm actually grabbing areas, selecting with my option key, and then I'm stamping.
just look at another tool that's real effective when we're eliminating. Uh, I'm going to go back. Mike, go ahead. We're about yes. halfway through, and um, this would be a good time to maybe ask about questions and so forth. Um, okay, great. Make sure that everybody's tagging along. And so um, if there are any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask it or uh, put it into the chat right now and I can ask it. Hi, hi everyone, uh, Lorena here. So I'm applying my sure. stamping tool and um, it, I'm, I have the opacity set at the 31% and I'm not seeing any changes apply. Should I increase or decrease the opacity or what do you recommend that I do? And I, I did do the- so, um, Did you make a duplicate layer first? Yes. What, what layer are you working on? I'm working on the second layer that we created. Okay. So did you make an adjustment layer? Yes. Okay. What, what's happening more than likely, um, uh, your, your tool isn't recognized in the area. So did you go ahead and, and move your target around the area you want to delete or eliminate? Hit your option key, hold it down so you see this target here. Yes. Then hit your cursor and it should select that and it should minimize it. Okay. Or increase your, go increase your opacity. Okay, we will do. Okay. And again, you might have to increase your opacity because it's, is that working? Yes, yeah, that, now I'm seeing it. Cool, thank you. So a lot of times, Again, your your Photoshop isn't rendering that area as as heavy as you would think. So you have to increase your opacity because it's it's picking areas that's either light or dark, depending on how you're choosing. Make sure when you go up into your mode and we didn't talk about you have some options with your mode. I always make sure my mode is on normal. And you have some different options here you can adjust, but I always keep it in normal. Because what that does is it selects the area around your area you want to delete and it clones that or it copies over it. You can see as I'm moving my area, it's taking this area next to it and you can see it's going to add this lighter area. So Mike, we have another question from uh, Caitlin. Uh, she's looking for suggestions for monitor calibration to ensure the white balance looks how it properly should. She has dual monitors and they look a little different and she's not sure which one to trust. You're going to have to uh, make. You're going to have to go through a calibration. Uh, there are apps where you can calibrate your monitor depending on which system you're working with. I know I use Mac, and I know my Mac monitors are pretty well calibrated with the system that comes with it. Um, if you're not sure what I do, a lot of times, again, I use the auto correction uh, both on exposure and. Uh, white balance. We're going to do that when we go into our next photo. We're going to go ahead and choose the auto uh, color correction with Photoshop. And again, I use this as a way to prove uh, my correction if I'm not quite sure. Again, we're you're getting into another different aspect of color grading. Until you do this enough with your devices and you're familiar with what the changes are, you're going to have to go in and uh, again, calibrate your devices when you until you're comfortable with them. That makes sense. So let's go ahead. Uh, I want to go into our next uh, photo with Joyce, uh, where we can get a little bit more uh, um, practice with some of the um, other tools. I want to get into um, some layering and masking with our tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close out of the section here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a command W and close out this particular image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up um, our second image, which is um, Joyce. Thank you, Joyce, for allowing us to use your image. And so, again, we're going to build. Our, our layers again, uh, right now my layers aren't open. So what I need to do is go into my window and choose my layers again, make sure my layer panel is on. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make um, another adjustment layer. So I wanna make sure that I do a duplicate layer. Well, I'm gonna do a, a Command J, which is my shortcut 
for control J for duplicate layer. Once I have my duplicate layer, now I'm going to start building my adjustments. And let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to enlarge Joyce's face here and I'm going to do a command plus or a control plus. And we're going to analyze um, her image. We have a lot of hair in the background. We have some adjustments here on her face. I want to go in on the lines here and some of the highlights and just minimize some of the effects here and work on the neck. And again, go through some different adjustments. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to make an adjustment layer and I'm going to work on the background real quick so that we can minimize some of these background hair. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate layer. I'm going to come down here, hit my duplicate layer on the bottom panel. Now I'm going to go back into my toolbar here and I'm going to use my healing tool because my healing tool I feel is better for eliminating my defects as opposed to cloning and building. So I'm going to go ahead and choose my healing tool. My tool, healing tool up here is at normal. We want to make sure we have content aware selected at the top of your option bar here. Make sure all your sample layers are selected as well. So when we come in here, I'm going to enlarge my uh, image again by hitting Command Plus or Control Plus. And I'm going to go ahead and start selecting areas here I'm going to minimize. So I'm going to go through and just pick some areas here on Joyce because I want to get into more tools here so we don't lose and miss time here. So I'm going to go ahead and start picking some of this area. So I'm going to take my target here, my tool, I'm going to highlight my image. And when we highlight our area we want to eliminate, you can see we get this target or this trail that's actually selecting my image and we're basically deleting. So I can be very detailed or what I can do, what I like working, when I work again, I like working with a larger tool. So I'm going to go to my bracket bar, which are next to my P again. And I'm going to go to the right bar or the right bracket and enlarge my target. Because I want to go ahead and work with a larger image so I can work faster. So I'm going to go ahead and you can see I can drag, highlight. I can adjust my target, highlight and select it. Or I can drag my tool and take this whole line of her hair and eliminate it. Take care of this here. Let's get rid of this big hair here. Oh, that's too much. I'm going to hit Command Z to delete this area here. Be real careful, everybody, when you're using your tool, because if it's too large, you get too close to your area, you can actually carry over area that's not working because what happens on the healing tool, what it does, again, it selects an area around your area you want to eliminate and it covers it up. So if you want to be a little more accurate, you can make your tool a little bit smaller. So I'm going to use my left bracket and make my tool smaller. So now I can just be real specific. And so I would go through my hair and work on uh, my correction. I can come in now and when I have specific areas that I know I want to totally eliminate, I'm going to use my healing tool. So I'm going to come into my face and there's areas here I want to eliminate. And again, I'm going to enlarge my face a little bit so we can see a little bit more where I'm going to choose and pick. I'm going to eliminate highlights. I'm going to eliminate some of these areas that are real dark and just make this face a little bit, not eliminate everything, but just make these areas a little bit more, uh, not as, as strong and just reduce them. So I'm going to, first of all, get rid of highlights. I'm going to go ahead and hit my left bracket key, eliminate that, eliminate that. Uh, I can come in here and start working on areas that I want to eliminate. We got some little black areas here. Let me get some imperfection I want to go ahead and eliminate. 
I just increase my image. I'm going to reduce my target. I come in and get real specific on these lines and totally eliminate these lines and soften them. I can either walk my target and work on these areas. And again, what my tool is doing is it's selecting areas around it and it's making it a little bit softer or eliminating it. And I can either get rid of them or reduce them. What's nice about working with layers again, everybody, is you have this other tool on your work panel where you see normal and opacity. Now, I can come in here and I can make all these adjustments on my healing. And I can go real heavy. And what I can do is I can go back into my layer panel that's selected, go into my opacity over here at the very top of my work panel where it says opacity, open up my opacity control, and I'll take the slider and reduce that opacity. And that reduces the opacity of that tool. Can everybody see that? That's at 13%. Here's at 43%. Here's at 100%. So let's go back and keep it around 50%. So now I have another control with how now I can control how strong my adjustment tool is. So what I want to do, because um, we're getting uh, a little bit into uh, the last part of our workshop, I want to go in and I want to bring up this tool that I think is real effective. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce my image a little bit. I'm going to hit my control command minus key. I'm going to reduce my image of Joyce here. And what I'm going to do now, I want to create a skin smoothing tool. And there's a tool that I just learned just recently that is real nice because now I can create a diffusion um, uh, layer and selectively diffuse and soften areas on Joyce's face. And so to do that, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our layer again. So I'm going to hit Command J. And I'm going to mark this noise. So if I double click on my uh, label of my, uh, my layer here, your window will open up to rename, select that. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back up to our menu bar in Photoshop. We're gonna go to our filter and we're gonna go down and we're gonna select the noise filter. Go into your noise filter and select your dust scratches. When this opens, you're gonna create a layer with a mask and you're gonna have these two options. You're going to have your radius, where I like keeping it at 21 to 40. What that does is it creates a blur action on your face or your area you're going to choose. I like keeping it around 20 to 21, just so it's not too heavy. Make sure your threshold is at one, because this controls the detail in your selection. You can see if, as I go to the left, my detail is getting more and more. I want to keep my detail at a minimum, so I'm going to keep it at one. And as you go along, you can adjust these if you want, but these are the settings I use pretty exclusively. When I have these set, I hit OK. And what happens is we get our image that is blurred and we don't want our whole image to be affected by this layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask. So what we do is we come down into your work panel and this second option next to the FX icon is your layer mask. So we hit that layer mask. What happens, we create this white layer mask. And so when you have a white layer mask, that's adding this effect. I don't want my whole layer to be affected. So I want to create a negative 
mask, which is black. So in order to do that, while we're on this layer, if you hit Command Control I, that changes your mask to black. So now it's hiding that adjustment. But I want to bring back that adjustment layer and just go in and pick areas in the face. So I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge our face here by hitting Command Plus or Control Plus so we can see what happens now. So once we're in this mask mode, we want to go back to our toolbar and we want to hit our brush, which is B. Right now I have it selected on pencil. And if you hit this pencil B, you're going to notice on each of these tools, there's this little triangle which refers to different options. So if I highlight that tool, you're going to see we have different options with this tool. I want to make sure it's on brush tool. So what, once it's in brush tool, now what's going to happen, we're going to brush in this adjustment, smoothing adjustment we just created with this layer mask. So we're going to work on these wrinkles. So look what happens when I brush on the face. And again, now that we're in the brush tool, this option toolbar up here is always open. So now make sure my workflow is on 100%. I want to make sure my opacity is at about 20. I like building my workflow and I, I like building my changes so it's not too heavy. So we're at about 20. I'm going to keep it at 27 and we're going to start brushing in this soft diffusion effect. So look what happens on our face. It starts smoothing out. And I can come in here and I can stay at 20%. But look what happens when I go to 100%. It really makes really fast adjustments. So depending on how much adjustment you want to use, usually what I do is I can go, go over, make all these adjustments. Again, I'm going to go ahead and, and use a wider brush so you can see what happens. I can go through and pick this whole area. just to expedite what we're doing here. Make sure you don't get around areas you want sharp. I'm working pretty fast here, everybody, because I want to go through this before our time runs out. Now I have this skin smoothing or this filter working. Now I can go back into my opacity control and look what happens when I adjust my opacity of my tool adjustment. So now I can go back and again, I can control this adjustment level. There's about 40, 50. And again, I can go back and normally what I do is I'll work on a, um, a, a skin smoothing for the face. If I've got a lot of, um, again, we have a lot of uh, corrections I want to make on the neck. I'll make another layer for the same filter just for the neck. But this way you get an idea of the process. I think we can go with a little more adjustment. So I'm going to increase my adjustment up to about 75. That's a little bit too much, maybe about 60. And so I can either uh, keep it there or look what happens when I turn this on and off. Can you see that happening, everybody? Let's minimize it. I'm going to go to um, Control Command minus. There's after. There's before. 
we still have correction, but look at the difference. Even at this point, I can go back to this layer, and if I want more, I can go ahead and I can increase it to 100%. I can go ahead and minimize it. And so the beauty of working with these layers, I can go back into all these layers. I can work on the adjustments. And I can go back and work on these different adjustments I made on these layers. Make sure everybody, when we work on layers, that you label these layers so that you can go back and refer to these layers. Again, um, I know this layer was our healing layer. My key is getting stuck. And go back in here if I want to go back to my healing brush. Make sure my healing brush is selected. And come back in here and just work on, again, some of these changes. So I know I rushed through these, uh, but again, uh, these tools, uh, again, uh, as you start working, you're going to start developing a workflow. Um, what I normally like recommending is um, when you start working on um, your changes here, make sure you build your changes. Don't try to do everything at once. And again, I try to base my adjustment time when I'm working on my images. I like to work within um, 10, 15 minutes at a time. A lot of times when I know I'm going to have to make adjustments here, again, there's a lot of adjustments or there's more adjustments specifically on uh, Joyce here because we have a lot of straight hairs in the background. When I normally work on my images, rule of thumb is I do um, less adjustments on male subjects and I do more adjustments on my female um, subjects. And it depends on what they're looking for as well. I normally go by what they're looking for or requesting. But again, I can come back. The beauty again of these layers, I can go back in and work on these layers. I can either go back to my adjustment layers. I can go back into my original second layer here and I can go back in and again, I can come back in here and uh, work on either healing or my stamp. Uh, uh, another option we have, again, we can go back to uh, our brush tool, which is B. And what happens when we go into our brush tool, what happens, it works like the cloning tool. I highlight my area I want to brush. And what's happening when we go ahead and we hit our option and our eyedropper selects that tool, it covers up and it brushes in the tone of that background. You can see what's happening. I'm brushing in the background, which is another option, another tool that we can eliminate hair. Again, you have different tools you can use. Now, if I want to take the hair on uh, the background here, again, I'm in my brush mode, which is your B key. I come in and I adjust my target to where my area I want to eliminate, which is this hair. I line up my target. I push my option key. My eyedropper selects that background. And you can see when I push that option key, I hold my cursor down your gray selected in that round target. Now we're eliminating the hair in the background. I can take and I can brush in this gray on the face if I want to. I can come in now, again, when I have discoloration and there's imperfections of skin, if I don't diffuse this enough and I don't want to diffuse everything, I can come in and pick areas here. I can come in Again, this little red patch on the face. I can decide where do I want to match this skin coloration. I can come in and select this area on uh, Joyce's face, highlight it, adjust my target, hit my option key, and I can brush this in. And just gets to be a matter of choosing the proper skin tone. Now what's happened, my opacity was at 100%. So I'm going to erase those. And look what's happening. 
Now I'm gonna reduce my opacity of my brush down to 20%, which is where I like to work. Choose an area that's a little bit more neutral. I'm gonna go into this lighter area, align my target, hit my option key, select that area, and start brushing in. And I can either highlight or I can drag and drop. And I can start painting over a lot of areas on here. You can see I'm affecting texture and the skin. I can minimize this and I'm just basically brushing and covering over with opaque tone or paint. I come in here I can do the same thing with the wrinkles. I might want to match this area in the cheek. Come in with my target again, align my, my target, hit my option key, choose that and paint in. You can see I can get really fine-tuned and specific. I can always go back and forth to the different layers. I can work on my noise layer, my healing layer. I can go back into the original background if I want to. You have these options. I can even like lighten this shadow here. Maybe I want to eliminate this little area on uh, Joyce's lip and come in, select this area, and just brush that over. What needs to happen, again, and this will happen as you start getting used to working this way, you start getting familiar with, with being able to identify areas that are going to match the changes that you want. This area here on this skin, on the cheek. I'm going to select the area uh, outside of this cheek. It doesn't select the area. It selects the tone of this color, which is going to be um, basically uh, opacity, which is going to be your brush paint. Because, see, I can, I can totally get rid of this shadow. I can go back and Command-Z eliminates everything or I can go back and redo it. I can hold my target there and keep clicking. Because what happens as I click, I'm adding that opacity. Now I can just go back and eliminate. You can see I keep hitting my Command Z and I'm eliminating. There's different tools and depending on how fast you want to work, Again, I, I mix and rotate my tools. I work with both my brush tool, my cloning tool, and my, my healing tool. A lot of people use the dodge tool, which is this tool here with the wand. And on the dodging tool, you can either use your dodging or burning. And so if I keep my dodging tool on, again, you have some options here with the tones that you want to dodge. Right now, if you look at your options menu bar up here, my exposure is at 100%. My range here is set to mid-tone. So if I'm, I come over here and I choose my mid-tones, I can dodge and I can go 100% or let's go back and reduce your dodging exposure to say 10%. And I can just dodge this, this mid-tone in here. I'll just select your shadow, which you'll notice this even more so. I can now just dodge this shadow. And you can see I can slowly minimize these shadow areas. I come in here and minimize this shadow on Joyce's cheeks. So I'm going to enlarge my shadow tool. And look what happens. What's nice about this tool, it's not affecting my bright area of my highlight on my face, it's only dodging the shadow. Come in and pick this really dark shadow on this little area on the cheek and I can dodge this if I want. A lot of people prefer this dodge and burn tool. To me, these are a little bit slower, but you can slowly build the changes. You can see I can totally eliminate this shadow here. 
I can get real specific by only isolating these areas. What's nice about this tool now, I can come in and if we look at Joyce's eye, this left eye over here is a little bit darker. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna choose my shadow and increase uh, my exposure to about 30%. And I can come in and I can dodge her eye and bring it back. And I can match this eye over here. Look what happens. So I can control that and erase, delete it by going to Command Z. And I come in and just find adjustment. If I want to just lighten the eyelash, I can come in, just maybe adjust the white so they look better. So I can, again, build up this density. So I know we're getting uh, uh, towards the end of our workshop and I wish we could have gone over more because we could spend a lot of time on this. And you can see as I started on Smokey, who I felt was going to be a little bit more minimal. Again, there's things that a lot of times when you get involved into retouching, you could spend a lot of time on really coming in and making these adjustments. It's going to be a matter of how much of these adjustments do you want to make? What's nice is knowing the controls that you have with your layers, the controls you have with your adjustment tools. And it's just going to be a matter of, of you getting used to how these tools make these adjustments and how they affect your, your image and how you can use your options controls at the top of your selected tool as well as your layers. And so my, my, my biggest advice is create a layer for every action and so a lot of times as i start my um, workload i'm going to go ahead and make maybe three or four duplicate layers and i'm going to label them as i go along my color adjustment my noise filter my clone for my healing. Now I can either do these all on duplicate layers or I can work and use adjustment layers for some of my adjustments. And I prefer again to use adjustment layers when I'm working on levels and my color. And it depends on, on how extreme these adjustments I need to make. Not every image I follow the same workflow depending on how much work I need to uh, uh, correct on each of these images. So if I go back to, let's get rid of these last. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm highlighting my layers. If I want to delete my layer, I highlight it, I drag it over to my garbage can, my trash. So before we um, end today, I know we have about, uh, five, 10 minutes. Uh, let's go ahead and open up um, to some Q&A. So Mike, when you're finished, um, if you want to do more work, you just do it as a Photoshop file. If you're all done. You yes, I'm sorry. Uh, before we end, I didn't close out. Well, yeah, this, is, this, is real, this is real important, everybody. Before you close, again, what I'm going to do now, when we're in Photoshop, when we're in Photoshop, Photoshop automatically creates a PSD file. Before you do anything, let's, we'll say for sake of today, I like what I did here on, on Joyce. I'm gonna hit save. I come up to my file, either I hit save or command control S. And your uh, dialog box is gonna open. It's gonna, it's gonna ask you, how do you want to Save this as, we'll say Joyce Retouch. Um, where under my NADA samples or wherever you want to put it. Now you have your format. Make sure your format option is under Photoshop because when you save it as Photoshop, again, 
all these layers and changes are going to be saved. Now you have an, a, a PSD file that has everything changed without making changes. So now I want to export this and I want to convert it to a working file that I can send online or print. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, first thing I do is I want to make sure that all these changes are grouped or merged or flattened. So I come up back into my layer menu bar here, go all the way down to the dot to the bottom of your dialog box and hit flatten. Now look what happens. All my changes are grouped and saved. Once this happens, you cannot go back and work on these individual layers. It compresses everything. But it hasn't done that to the original yet. You're only going to flatten this because what you're going to do now, you're going to go back in into your file and you're going to save this as your same dialog box will open. Now it's going to give you an option. Do you want to save it as a PSD Photoshop? No, you want to save it as a JPEG. Come down into all your different options, hit JPEG. Now all this this file is going to be saved as a JPEG back to my original folder here, which is in my Natus Workshop samples. Hit save. I always make sure all my 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 color embedded profiles are set. These are automatic defaults. I never mess with this because they're preset. Hit save. You get this other dialog box that act, asks you. How do you want this change these image options? I always have it selected for maximum quality of 12. And this is important too. I want all these changes to be saved for the baseline optimized. Standard is a little bit more, if you want to consider it's like a normal conversion, baseline optimized is like a high resolution save progressive gives you three different samples i don't do that i only save it as a baseline optimized hit okay now this is saved back to my files now that i'm finished now i'm going to close my folder uh, either come in here and either close your file or i go to command w it's going to ask you, do you want to save these changes, your PSC file as a JPEG? And I don't save because if you hit save, it's going to convert your PSD file to JPEG. I just hit don't save. Now you've got a JPEG version, your original PSD Photoshop version, and I have my original version that was never touched because they're saved with this non-destructive version under PSD and your destructive version as a JPEG. Does it make sense? So if I look at my PSD file, that's actually considered your original non-destructive file that's unchanged until you go in and you change it and convert it to JPEG. Um, so I have a question from uh, Lorena. Uh, she's asking, when it comes to posing, what are the first things you do or what advice can you give to a newbie? I know it's a little bit different than retouching, but the first thing I do when I'm in um, or when I do start to think about shooting a portrait or headshot, I want to make sure all my lighting it's as even as, as I can get it. So I want to make sure I either choose available light or have even light so I don't have a lot of bright sunlight, which is going to give me really hard shadows and really hard highlights. I like to pick an area where I have some open shade, not really dark shade, but maybe shade that's on the side of a building or shade in a park where I have background with uh, trees and shrubbery. And I have a good flat even lighting on my face with a little contrast because you're never going to get a perfect 
even uh, light on a face because you're always going to have the direction of your highlight, the sunlight and shadow. Um, I make sure that I don't have a totally dark background. I choose an area where I have some dark area in the background, but I have some highlights, maybe with some sunlight, so that when I pose my subject, it's sitting in this really bright area in my background so that I get some separation from my subject. So if we look at, at my, my pose here in my room, here I'm flat on mugshot. Here I'm angling my shoulders. My chin is off axis to my shoulders. There's a start. If I were to take my chin directly online, now I have my chin and shoulders in line. Again, depending on what you're actually photographing for, that's more of an artistic pose. Here's a traditional pose. I'm off at an angle, my shoulders in one direction. Look at the lighting on my face. Here's my highlight and shadow. This is not a bad lighting for, for me because it gives you a little more contrast. There's shadow, here's a little bit of highlight on my face. Now I'm going into more of a even lighting. And again, I rotate my chin within this axis of my lighting so I get a variation on my lighting ratio between the highlight and the shadow. And I can come in close. Look what happens on my lighting on my face because my lighting's coming up here. So Mike, this was great. Um, thanks, there's, you know, as you can tell, as you can tell from what Mike was doing, this is a huge program. And it's great to just get these few little tools so it's less scary to get started. So if there are any uh, other questions or Mike, do uh, you have um, any parting comments? I thought we were gonna be able to streamline. I thought it was gonna go by too fast, but you can see we got kind of sidetracked in our first one, got a little bit more defined in Joyce. But again, you can spend a lot of time in Photoshop and I try to keep my time minimized. There's a lot of tools and options in Photoshop, which is great. It's a great, it's a great application to use. My trick and the best advice that I was ever told with Photoshop and any app, use the tools you need for your work. You don't have to know everything. I'm not a Photoshop guru. I use the tools that I need for my specific uh, type of photography. I have a type of photography that I focus on, my corporate event work. I have my portraits that are real commercialized. So I, I keep my editing to minimum because when I, when I do my Photoshop, part of my um, services offer free retouching at a minimum to my clients. So if I got to spend an hour or two editing, I'm losing money. So I keep my editing down to five or 10 minutes. So again, I have these tools refined. I've actually added some um, a workflow to my Photoshop um, uh, normal process. I'm now breaking everything down into layers so I can control those layers, which slows down my process. Normally, I, I used to do everything on one layer. So I'm changing and developing my skills in Photoshop because you know I feel it's an a, a application that I use not as extensively as I use some of my other applications that I use exclusively for editing my images, but it's a, it's a major app that I use for retouching. And so what's nice about Photoshop, and a lot of you have seen, we had a big uh, Adobe Max workshop uh, convention that happened. There's a lot of new upgrades to Photoshop and it's always changing. You can't stay up with all the upgrades and changes. That's the biggest problem with the digital world right now. Again, um, use one or two tools, learn them, uh, uh, refine them, and then build your tools. I only usually use uh, four tools in Photoshop. Cloning, healing, I've now started using the brush tool. I've learned this, this new layer masking with the noise scratch tool. I use some tools that we didn't go over 
in Photoshop with the sharpening tool, which is a really good tool for sharpening areas. We didn't get into highlighting, selecting the eyes and, and the uh, mouth for sharpening, which I automatically do with most of my re with what most most of my retouching with my headshots. It's just again, you can see our time is 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 gets uh, um, kind of cut into when we start getting into some tools because we could spend a lot of time. I was having problems with some of my navigation because I was losing my signal here, and we saw some things happening again because of the way we're conducting this. So anyway. Well, this of these you know I, I think that there's enough here and and if you're interested certainly email me if this was valuable to you and you'd like to do more and uh suggestions for maybe some other classes yeah. we have a lot of people in our chapter who know how to do a lot of things so i welcome suggestions on uh whatever subject might be of interest to you where we can do more of these zoom chats uh so we'll, we'll have more of these uh certainly if there's interest uh we've only scratched the surface so there's a lot more we can do uh, uh, thank you, uh, Catelyn. Uh, she says this was great. Thanks so much. Um, I uh, thank you guys for coming, uh, and, and making this member event, uh, so valuable. Thanks everybody. Thanks Steve and Daryl, uh, for helping me with this. Um, I hope we can do more of this. Uh, we can uh, really specialize on some of these, um, retouching tools. But again, uh, thanks everybody. Uh, it's a new world guys.